Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am out here in Texas, which is where I used to live. I can't escape this place, but I'm out here at Drive Tanks to go tank shopping. Uh, this one's for sale, I think, or maybe it's that one. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but they are really, really expensive. So maybe we're gonna look at something a little bit smaller and affordable, um, but I'm really excited, so let's go some tanks. So I'm out here with Tommy. He's going to be my tank salesman and uh, I'm probably gonna learn some things. I have no idea what I want, but we're gonna find the tank of my dreams. Um, so this looks ideal. You said earlier this has rubber yeah. treads so you could take it on the road. Yeah, if so this is one of our road legal tanks. This is called an FE 101, also known as a Scorpion. It is a okay. British light reconnaissance vehicle. Um, and it is one of the light vehicles that the British had after World War II that was basically made for speed and power. So okay. if you want to get somewhere fast, this is the vehicle you want to do it in. Right, and you could fit it through a drive through possibly, like oh, Chick-fil-A, oh, yeah. yeah. maybe. All right, this might be an option because I love Chick-fil-A. How fast does this thing go? You said it was for yeah, so, built for Yeah, so this thing speed. is a reconnaissance vehicle, so it's built for speed. So this thing is powered by a Jaguar engine, so it is a Jag. What? And it is capable of going 55 Jag miles an hour. <laughs> yep. How fast? 55 miles 55. an hour. Damn, 50. Okay, and that's pretty much the. Yeah, top you don't really want to go any go. faster than that in a, in a tracked vehicle. All right. Okay. Dude, this thing is awesome. Very dusty. With the turret on top, assuming if you take it down the road, can you leave that up there and just you have to just block off? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The turret is, is meant to is meant to stay on the tank. Um, okay. In fact, you can fit two more people inside the tank because in wartime, the tank would have a crew of three. You'd have a driver, gunner, and then a loader. And so your right. loader and your gunner would go in the turret. Okay. So, so let's take this down the road or like ATF, you probably have to concrete or fill whatever. I'm not sure what the process yeah, is. It's yeah, yeah, no worries. To... So um, all tanks that you buy are mainly demilitarized, meaning that the barrel is cut up in some way, shape, or form, and that the breach cannot actually accept the live gun rounds. Um, okay. So therefore, you don't actually have to go through the ATF with that. Um, it's this would be more like owning a tractor per se instead of owning an actual tank. That's how right. that's how simple this is. Okay. If you want to do have a if you want to have a live gun, then you're actually getting into ATF and tons of paperwork. That's, that's right, just complicated. right, right. Well, that's easy enough. So, how much does this cost on average? So, this is actually our cheaper end of the tank side of the world. Um, these will run anywhere from 30k to 50k. So, which is pretty. That's cheap. cheaper than the truck I have right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sold. <laughs> All right, well, this seems pretty ideal just because I got a new office space and we're taking a piece of it and turning it into a garage. So this will probably be one of the best options to start anyway. So, all right, what else do we have over here? We got, what is this, Donna, has it got a name? Yeah, so this one's Dome? name is Dana Ray. This Dana is, Ray, This okay. is a Leopard 1A4. Um, so a little bit of history about this tank. This was the first tank that Germany produced after World War II. Um, now, during World War II, the Germans, their, all their tanks had the idea of a ton of armor, basically to block enemy shells. Right. Um, because the Germans knew that they could not outproduce Detroit. So for every five tanks that the Americans produced, the Germans only produced one tank. So they knew that that one tank had to be good. Right. After the end of World War II, the Germans threw this idea of heavy armor out the window. And also newer weapons came in, like the RPG that like made armor kind of obsolete at the time. So what the Germans did is they went to Porsche um, and they said they wanted a tank that could deal with the modern battlefield. And so Porsche, they decided to have a tank relatively thinly armored, but have a huge engine on it. Um, the whole idea was speed and power for this guy. Um, so this tank is capable of going 50 miles an hour on the road, right around 30 miles an hour off. It's powered by Mercedes-Benz twin turbo V10 diesel engine um, and, it's, and it can have a crew of four. So, huh. yeah. So it's only not that much slower than this thing right here. They're almost, yeah. okay. And what would this cost? So <laughs> I'm like scared to ask. Yeah, so like this one is definitely- A mansion on- <laughs> Yeah, so this is the Leopard 1A4. So it's, a, it's the rare version of the Leopard 1. So oh, this nice one would run rare. anywhere from 1 million to 1.4. Good God, holy crap. That is the- But it's a Mercedes designed by Porsche. So I mean, Right, you know. right, this is like the supercar of Takes. So how much does it weigh? So this one weighs 45 tons. What was that? How much did that thing weigh? Right around 18 tons. Good God. I feel sorry forever has to travel with this thing, like shipping it wise. I feel like even trying to get this to my office would cost almost as much as it is to buy the darn thing. Good God. Um, so if I was to buy this compared to that one, 
what would the shipping cost? I'm assuming it would go by freight or a specific. Yeah, so this would, this would definitely go on a freight, definitely something heavier that could transport it, um, maybe even by train, because this is not something you can just take down the road. Right, and also you would this, take up the whole freaking yeah, and road. You'll see that this thing is <laughs> right around four, uh, four, four feet wider than your Scorpion tank. Okay. So, so if I was to drive this, um, you said it was easy to drive? Yes. Okay. This thing is notoriously easy to drive. Like, if you can't drive this thing, I can't trust you with a coloring book. <laughs> okay. Like, this thing, like, like normally when you think of tanks, you think of, like, like levers and, like, whatnot. Right, yeah. With this thing, it actually is a steering wheel. So it's basically like an upside on horseshoe. Um, it's incredibly easy to drive. The other thing is, is this is actually an automatic tank. You do not need to worry about shifting or anything. It's literally like driving a golf cart. Okay. Yeah, you got, you got your gas pedal, you got your brake pedal, you got your steering wheel. So is that the Scorpion the same way? Or so is that the one Scorpion different? is actually, it actually models the old world of tanks as in it actually has steering, steering levers. Okay, so, so this one's a little more difficult A little bit more drive, different and also, still... yeah, and this one is also a, a manual tank. So you do have to worry about shifting. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So that thing is freaking massive. How big is this? I feel like I would take out a building on accident just yeah, turning. Yeah, no worries. So this <laughs> thing is actually chambered for 105 millimeter shells. Um, so Do you have any that are laying around that are? So this is how big your, your shell would, is for these oh kind of tanks. God. So if you want to How much does this up, weigh? Right around 30 pounds. Oh, it's not that bad, but the weight distribution makes it awkward. It's just, yeah, it's just It's, it's just all awkward. like over here. <laughs> well, you gotta think, like, you gotta have your loader inside who actually has to maneuver the shell around inside the tank, which is already cramped as it is. Right. So. Holy crap. And then, so this one has a little one. Yes. Do you have the shells or, or the projectile? What, what would you call it? Yeah, yeah, so things? you'd call it a projectile, and yes, yeah. we do. So this is the round that our Scorpion tank fires. It is a 76 millimeter projectile. Um, this is actually a low velocity gun. So the whole idea behind the gun on this tank was not to engage enemy tanks. It was basically a, oh no, something's come up and I need to get out of here, but I also need to throw some lead down range. Um, so it was basically a shoot and scoot kind of vehicle or basically, I'm just gonna shoot at you because I wanna get away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you occupied. This is you and this is the guy she tells you not to worry about. So moving on to probably the most common tank that you guys might have been familiar with, and it is a T-34. Little bit of history about this tank. This tank is, it's very well known for both its use in history and also its use in like cinema and movies. Um, yeah. So this is called the T-34-85. The T-34 meaning the model and the 85 meaning the gun caliber, 85 millimeter. Okay. Um, so this is your, your most produced tank during World War II. Um, this was produced by the Soviets. Um, it is not, a very nicely built tank is a crudely built tank, but because it was built crudely, they are able to manufacture tens of thousands of like these Like a whole things. bunch of them? Yeah. Um, and driving one is pretty much the same as driving a tractor. Granted, it is not very easy to drive, but you, you do get the feel that you're driving a beast of a machine. Right. So. That's cool. So how much would this cost? So T-34s are a little bit more expensive only because you have that World War II feel to them. Right. Um, so they can go anywhere from 100 hundred grand to maybe half a million dollars, depending on their condition and how nice right, they are. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you were to pick a tank from World War II, which one would you prefer? So I would actually choose the Sherman, only because they're- And that's that one over there, right? Yeah, so that's, that's, that, that's that one. Okay. Um, they are extremely easy to drive. They're very crew, crew friendly. Um, this tank is not crew friendly. This is- So what's crew friendly? Like too tight and compact? And yeah, uh, too tight, too compact, and also how easy it is to like get in and out of the vehicle. Because if you're getting okay. shot at, you know, uh, you, you, you want to get out of the vehicle relatively fast right. and pretty, pretty safe. Whereas this, you, you're pretty, it's pretty much a death trap. Right. But, well, that sounds fun. Yeah. So Sherman's the way to go. So this is our final tank and it's the same as the... So it's the same type of tank. It is still okay. a Leopard 1. This is just a later version. This is the Leopard 1A5. This is actually the later iteration of the tank that you saw, which is Dana Ray, which is the Leopard 1A4. Okay. Um, this one is the one that was actually for sale. It's for sale for $400,000. <laughs> so. God. This looks like I might be getting a scorpion. <laughs> uh, for uh. a starter, anyway. <laughs> Um, so what's the difference? What makes this half the price of the one that's underneath? Good question. So Dana Ray, the, the Leopard 1A4, that is a uh, rare version of the Leopard 1 tanks. They did not produce as many of that number of tanks. Okay. Um, and also that one is museum uh, quality, pretty much. It was been, so it's, it's not meant to be like driven and dirtied up. It's just um, meant to well, look there pretty. Well, it's a tank, so it definitely can get dirtied up. Right. It's, just, it's definitely been babied over the course of its life. And okay. it was kept in a private collection and the, the, the owner really took care of it. Okay. Um, so yeah. We keep it that way. Yeah. That's cool. So um, 
Can we test drive this? Let's do it. So we're going to go drive this tank, but I'm not going to show you. You're going to have to wait till next week when we release the second video. <laughs> That's a wrap for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you, Tommy, for uh, showing me around. I'm probably going to forget half the stuff he said. There's a lot of information to take in, but uh, I'm really excited to uh, go drive this thing. Let's go do it. <laughs>